we really need to talk about a new AI agent that has now come out called Manus. Now, this is making lots of uh, commotion in the world because this is yet another leap forward with AI capabilities, and it's once again coming from China. So yes, we had the deep seek moment, and now we have this Manus moment as far as AI agent capability. I just made a video about the popularity rise of AI agents and how more and more businesses are starting to use AI agents. So now this is also very important for us to understand in academia and in society in general. So what is Manus? So Manus is this new AI agent that is reportedly even better than the capabilities of OpenAI. So some of the benchmarks here, they showcase how Manus is actually much better at OpenAI on several different levels. In fact, every single one of these with the GAIA benchmark. What is a GAIA benchmark? It's basically a, a test or a system of questions that, as this says, proposes real world questions that require a set of fundamental abilities, such as reasoning, multimodality handling, web browsing, and generally a tool use proficiency. The way that this works is that a human can reach 92% success rate and when this came out in 2023, GPT-4 could only reach about 15%. But of course now they're much more capable, but you can see how being able to use tools, being able to reason and accomplish tasks, apparently this Manus is able to do an extremely good job of doing it, reaching heights that are way beyond what OpenAI is capable of. This is very popular as far as making waves in the AI world. And this has even been reported through Forbes magazine as well as Newsweek. So it's definitely uh, making, making the rounds as far as uh, news agencies is concerned. And the big thing about it is that its capabilities and what it's able to, to do is pretty impressive on, on many different levels. Lots of examples are showcased here on their website as far as what it can do, all the different implementations, just like any other AI agent, it can do many multi-step tasks. And that's the key is that it's able to go through and do these things for you. I really like this example here of asking it to create a biography and a website dealing specifically with an individual. So it goes through and sure enough, it is able to understand the information, get lots of different sources, go through everything, compile the information, check it against itself, reason to make sure that this is appropriate. And then it's making all these independent decisions on its own without asking for input and then creating the website, double checking it, making sure that it's available and proper, and then displaying the actual results. And the actual results are very useful, very, very informative. I bring this result because I also want to show you this other result where it was used by this individual for an actual academic type thing where it says I wanted to test how Manus would do on a very long research task. So I asked it to create an entire course on AI for content creation. It took nearly two hours to complete, but what I got was impressive. Eight chapter course with tools, use cases, and even prompt examples. So that's pretty impressive on an academic side in that it was able to create this very usable course. Now, of course, as far as we know, dealing with proper AI literacy, you would still need to go through this just like everything else as far as to verify things but man, if it could create this course entirely and it's exactly like what you wanted and you're able to go through and quickly and easily verify things, then think about the amount of time it's saving. Think about how helpful it would be to update content, to enhance content, even to show it content and be able to properly analyze. So yes, very powerful. And there's many other examples there showing different things that the AI is capable of doing as an agenic process, meaning that it's making these decisions all on its own. So that's where the real power comes here in that it's claiming to be fully autonomous, but of course it really isn't because you're making the decision initially and then throughout the whole thing, you can always continue the conversation and say, change this, reformat this, put it in this, uh, in this organization. Again, you're continuing on the conversation, but it's really powerful. People are lining up to try and use this uh, new AI agent because of its, uh, its power and capability. Right now it's on invite because it's a very small company. But the big thing here is that they're able to do this. This is something that OpenAI was leading on, right? So how is it that this Chinese company, this small company, is now able to 
bound beyond them and be able to do so much more. This is something that we really need to be watching and understanding because these constant improvements are going to mean more and more for academics uh, on different levels. One, you can see the example there of creation of content, but then also when we ask students to do things, when we give them assignments, what's to keep a student from using an AI agent to help them in accomplishing tasks? Now, of course, using AI as a tool is great, but we don't want the tool to simply do everything for them, which is exactly what an AI agent does, is it's structured to do more and more for you, even without guidance, it will still make these decisions. So that's a very powerful thing for us to, to take into account. The first example I gave you as far as, hey, do a bibliography or do a biography and create a website. Well, in the same way, if I'm a student, I could say, write a report for me and create a website or create a, uh, a whole presentation for me as far as the, all the different components of it and the actual slides for it. So an AI agent could be doing more and more. This is why I am definitely saying that we need to do a lot of thinking as far as our assignments. They should be more experiential as much as possible. Yes, we can still have them do things outside of class, but they still need to be held accountable. There still should be components that require them to present, that require them to answer questions. By mixing these things, that's where we're going to be able to continue to have students held accountable for their learning. Having said that, we also need to be teaching students how to properly use these tools. These are the tools of the future. These are the tools that are available right now. So when a student graduates, they're going to have to be able to use these tools. So they have to be ready. They have to know AI literacy for that foundational knowledge, as well as specific tools, as well as these ongoing developments for the different fields for business for every single degree they're going to have different tools and this ai agent seems like it's going to be applicable for virtually every single type of field so it's important for us to stay on top of what's going on the developments going on with this so that we can see how it applies within our own fields as well as within our own capabilities of creating content and increasing the overall educational experience for our students so there's a lot going on here um, the big thing with this company is that they've expressed that they're going to make everything that they're doing, they're going to make it available as an open source AI later on this year. So that's really powerful as well as far as it being used by many different organizations as well as individually by people. So it's going to be widespread. AI agents, as I said, is, it's a big deal and it's going to become easier and easier to use and implement. So it's something that we need to be at least knowledgeable of so that we can incorporate and understand and then deal with it within our own uh, teaching and learning journey as well as uh, developing of our students. Okay, thank you very much. And as always, remember that learning is for life. Thank you, everyone. If you got anything out of this, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. I also always very much look forward to your comments.